Finally! Are you ready? But that's not me, I'm the Switchblade, baby. You, you, and especially you, Austin316 says I just whipped your ass. Goodbye. Write it down, you like writing things down. I am your favorite podcaster's favorite podcast. I am. Omega, 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 the Omega Luke Wrestling Podcast. That is right, guys. You have tuned into your favorite podcaster's favorite podcast, Omega Luke, for a very special interview with a massive British wrestling indie name. It's TK Cooper. TK was an absolute gentleman and a perfect guest, may I say, first of all. And it was a lot of fun to talk to the guy who has really wrestled everywhere in the UK. And trust me on this. You will see so much more from in 2019. I promise you he will be bigger and better than he already is because he is that good. And with all the guys on WWE contracts maybe not being able to do as many indie shows as before, TK Cooper is the perfect guy to slip straight in their shoes. So wait no longer. I don't have to explain anymore because the man himself is here it's me and TK Cooper. TK Cooper, thank you very much for joining me here today and welcome to Omega Luke Wrestling Podcast. Hey, 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 thank you very much for having me. <laughs> it is an absolute pleasure to have you here today and I am sure many people would love to hear more about you and your shenanigans in the world of wrestling, especially in progress where you have yet again had an, another amazing year. But I I want to start right at the beginning. Uh, you are originally from New Zealand and you're living now in London. How did you find adapting to the UK when you first came over here? Uh, well, like the lifestyle just in general? or Yeah, yeah. I suppose both really. The, the wrestling style, the lifestyle. I mean, like first and first of all, getting my head around public transport was a bit of a stress. Like, I, I, like I've kind of got it down to an art now in terms of like the tube lines yeah. and what I need to switch and like to get about from A to B. But wrestling... Uh, was just as confusing to be fair like i didn't know like it was just it was lucky that i knew about progress through youtube yeah so i knew like the the channels to like find people so like i type in progress wrestling i find out the wikipedia it says who owns progress this is john briley i look up john briley on facebook i message john and ask him if we can come train and then and that's about the you know there's like the degrees of separation that it took to like start yeah to get you in there to get your foot in the door yeah, i suppose people- get the ball rolling for yeah. like uk wrestling and me yeah so do, do, are you really surprised with how busy the lifestyle is in london because i suppose um were you from a busy part of new zealand where you lived before uh so i'm from auckland which is like the most populated city in new zealand yeah but there's like a million people that live in new zealand oh uh, sorry in auckland and 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 in total there's like four, just over four and a half million so it's like the most concentrated of like the areas that yeah. have a lot of people, but it's not really at the same level as London in terms of like hustle and bustle. Yeah, um, it's, it's you know, crazy. Just isn't constantly it? about. Yeah, yeah. There's never a down. Never seems to be like a down period in London of like everybody goes home. Yeah, there's just it's, there's just always crowds of of people on the streets. So what do you do now? And you're like outside of the world of wrestling and, and your training. What are you like your hobbies and interests around London? What do you do in your spare time? Well, around London, uh, so I kind of just kind of just transposed all of the stuff i used to do back home over here anyway like um i play music like i play guitar and i play keyboard yeah Uh, not very often just kind of in my house just like to myself just as as a fun thing to do usually through like the spring and the summer i'll play touch rugby at um uh what the heck's it called uh regent's park with my uncle like i i don't really play like rugby 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 anymore so i just play like touch rugby as like a fitness thing because yeah. it's just fun to be out in the sun yeah is that something that you did in in new zealand play rugby growing up yeah yeah the standard like stereotypical like new zealand upbringing is just all rugby 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 which is great <laughs> like i love rugby but it just in the end i prefer to be a wrestler so here yeah. i am in london <laughs> well yeah and we're really glad to have you here and we are seeing quite a lot more wrestlers from australia and new zealand like yourself now being noticed and sort of breaking out into the indie scene and even some into wwe um you know especially with like the likes of rhea ripley and and tony storm um do you think that's because of the indie scene being hotter than ever and because professional wrestling has grown in popularity in new zealand and australia 
I think it's a combination of both, and I think one is because of the other. Like, uh, me and Trav coming over here and kind of waving, flying the flag for New Zealand, and then uh, guys like uh, Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher coming over and doing the same for Australia. Yeah. And just... Um, and even people before us, like Tony, like Tony's been here way longer than Trav or I have been. Yeah. So she kind of laid the groundwork um, on the on the D-Lo, and it's only because of the platform that Progress put me and Trav on that it ended up, you know, like so obvious that there is talent in the bottom corner of the world. And I think because of that, like the small scenes we have in Australia and New Zealand have been like, oh, like we can we can we can do this. We can yeah. we can get to a level where like. You know, people people are looking at us and saying, you know, we, we you know, there's we're, we're equals in terms of like talent pool. Even though, like nobody prior to I, I I guess prior to the Power Trip or the Aussie Open being commodities in the scene, no one, as far as I know, was really looking to Australia or New Zealand for like the next like anything, next breakout star, next next anybody really. Yeah. It's only through the channels of like, say progress fight club pro riptide rev pro those you know those uh like louder more prominent promotions that we've had um opportunities like this to really put like australia and new zealand on the map and through that like the generation uh, like the people who are wrestling in australia and new zealand currently you know they're getting you know good vibes from from that and then there's people coming up uh, like i i know for a fact that there are people a new trainees in New Zealand, at the very least, who have seen, who are, have been inspired because of like the the things me and Trav have been able to. Uh, I say, I may, I say, me and Trav. I like Trav is, like, Trav's been the leader of this thing for yeah. a long time, and it's just kind of been nice to be a part of it as well. But like, I mean, like Trav signed a WWE now, so like he's 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 really like the flag bearer of this, and I'm just lucky that you know I've I've had I've had the run I've had in progress and on my own and when it came to it like alongside him as well which was pretty special yeah definitely you had a really good tag team with travis and is that something that happened because of the company putting you together um both of you being having similar backgrounds being from the same country and realizing that um or or is it because you realized you had a really good chemistry together uh well Trav, like Trav, had like a major hand in training me originally back in New Zealand. Yeah. So I've kind of known him forever, and then we wrestled as a tag team um, in Australia for a while. We had like four or five matches, so we kind of already like done it before. And when Progress said that that was the plan to like add Trav to the group, yeah. Um, it just, I guess, it just was like natural because it just it was the easiest way to introduce him to Progress, and. Like I like Trev and I already knew that we could we could flow together pretty succinctly. Yeah, that the chemistry like, was there. Yeah, not to, yeah, not to the level that it ended up getting to, where we ended up being like one of the most popular tag teams in the world for like a little bit, and then I got hurt, and then it all fell away. But you know, I don't think there was ever a plan for there to be some kind of like meteoric rise for me and Trav. It was just kind of like, well, we need something for Trav. Let's stick him with TK, and then that was, and we just went from there and just ended up like being very popular <laughs> yeah well yeah it definitely worked um i actually have a question now from one of my friends who is a massive progress fan probably more than i am um <laughs> he's also a big fan of yours as well and when i told him that i was having you on the podcast the first thing he said to us mate you've got to ask him what was it like to be in the crowd at, well what was it like to be in front of the crowd at the wembley arena for progress uh oh well it was magic man because like being especially just being in the pre-show i say just like it's a small thing being in the being in the pre-show battle roll meant there was uh like none of the pressure and all of the experience yeah so like still like you i can still get to go out in the ring be a part of the atmosphere and be a part of the show and see like the whole crowd at probably its hottest because like the show's just starting so no one like they haven't seen too much like this is the first thing they get to see yeah and just so you know everybody's excited you know this is this is all new for us as wrestlers you as fans like it's all like a a new abstract thing to enjoy yeah and take in so like Wembley obviously you know if, if things had been different and I had like uh, like I would have preferred like you know in in an ideal world to have a a proper match on the card but yeah. to still like still get still get the nod from John and Jim to be put on uh, w w progress in any in any form for a show like Wembley. It's pretty. It was it was great. Like it was really really unforgettable. Oh yeah, definitely. 
I suppose then as well, um, you can then sit back after you've you've done your part and just really enjoy it as much as you know you've been out, you've done your part. You can then come back and sit back and then watch the incredible wrestling that that follows you after. Yeah, that's pretty much what we did as well. Like I just pretty much spent the rest of the uh, the evening with Mambo watching from the watching from up in the up in the stands. Like they'd set up a telly. Uh, that was linked to the hard cam backstage yeah. for all of us to just like sit and watch. But me and Mambo were both kind of like, you know, you don't really come to a show to watch it from backstage. So we wanted, you know, we wanted to be in amongst the crowd and feel like the vibe and the atmosphere. Yeah. And just wanted to like, take in the whole experience. So like, there's pretty much what you said. We we just did that. Yeah, we, we did the web oil. We jumped up when then we got changed, head showers, went up and sat in the stands and just watched the whole show and enjoyed it because it's like Brit rests at its biggest stage. Yeah. And I suppose, like watching progress, even just at the 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 usual arena in Camden, it's it's loud enough as it is, and then to fill Wembley Arena and then to make it with progress fans who are absolutely fucking crazy anyway, um, which we're going to get onto a little bit later on with something that you spared on yourself. But at Wembley Arena with progress fans. It's, it was so loud listening to it just from my TV, watching it back. So I can even imagine, you know, wanting to be in, 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 in the crowd and amongst it. It's got to be such a better feeling than just sitting backstage and watching it, definitely. So I can understand why you've done that. And speaking mm. of Chuck Mambo, you guys have your own YouTube show. Yeah. Which yeah. I've actually been watching uh, recently as well. And I must say, you two, you do fucking crack me up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So what is the basis of the of the YouTube show? Because obviously it's um, about getting out of the mid card, and it's yeah. So the, so I mean, at the end of the day, the show is just a vlog of minor members weekends together. Yeah, traveling down the country, wrestling all over the place, and well, it's just it's just for fun, really. It's just yeah. it's just something to do. Like we're both kind of creative dudes. We just wanted to do something to reflect that and. It's just a, it's just it's just for fun, really. Yeah, just I suppose it's um, I don't suppose you you watch it, but the the B in the Elite series that the Young Bucks. Yeah, do. that's kind of that's pretty much what inspired us to do yeah. it. Really, just kind of like there and, and theirs is on so much on like on so much of a higher level because obviously they wrestle for Ring of Honor and they wrestle for New Japan. So like the scale of what they're talking about when they're when they're doing their stuff is like so much more highbrow and ours is obviously just like hey it's uh, me and mambo we're just going down <laughs> to support. like i mean not to like not to make it sound like it's small no. like wrestling for riptide but like in the in the grand scheme of things like wrestling for progress wrestling for riptide wrestling for like anything up north like north wrestling or defiant seems like uh you know like a, a drop in the in the bucket yeah. compared to what young bucks do but it's still like a reflection of our time on yeah. the scene at the moment so that's kind of why we do it because it's like we just want to show just what what we get up to yeah it's 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 good for the fans who who watch you at these at these shows because you it is very much of a a cult following at the same time with like progress like you don't have fans who flitter in and out of progress once you're in it that's it you're you're hooked yeah totally. and that's, that's the experience that i said so it's more of like uh sort of like a backstage viewing of you and mambo 